Hey guys, and welcome to another game review video. Before I start, I'd just like to disclose that this is not an advertisement and includes no paid promotion. Right, so the scoring system I'm going to use today is a basic system where I'll score each category out of 10. There are 5 categories I have waiting in the wings, and we'll get onto them in just a second. But before that, I'd just like to say everyone really does need to go and buy this game, as it's honestly a masterpiece in my opinion. It's available to buy on Steam, so please use the link in the description and it'll take you straight to the store page. So, the five categories I'm going to use today are graphics, user interface, replayability, fun factor, and difficulty. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So Mud and Blood offers two main game modes. First of all, we're going to talk about the classic mode, which is a great throwback to Mud and Blood 2. The aim of the game in this mode is to survive as many waves as possible, whether that be by defending your starting line or progressing through the battlefields. As long as you don't let 10 German soldiers make it past your starting line, then you can keep going endlessly, although that's much easier said than done. What I really love about this game mode is your ability to do pretty much whatever you want. Do you want to build up a strong point with 50 caliber machine gun emplacements? Or maybe do you want to call in a tank for support? Or maybe you just want to throw sheer numbers at the enemy by recruiting soldiers every couple of waves? Whatever your ideas are, there's freedom for you to experiment with, experiment with your tactics, as well as trying to reach the highest wave possible for them all important ribbons. The more classic games you play, the higher your in-game rank will increase, which in turn unlocks more scenarios for you to play in that game mode. Now maybe wave survival isn't your cup of tea, and maybe you want a structured campaign. Well if that's the case then look no further, because Mud and Blood has one of the most expansive campaigns I've come across that easily dwarfs many AAA titles. The campaign features 333 days of hell, or in other words, 333 battlefields of increasing difficulty fighting all the way from Normandy Beach on D-Day to the very heart of the Nazi regime. Again, ribbons do play a huge role in this game mode, as the further you get and the more challenges you complete, the more XP you will earn and the more ribbons you can acquire. Ribbons can grant really useful perks for your future battles, so it's well worth investing the time into unlocking them. But for this review, I'm going to be focusing on the campaign, which I suck at personally, as it's really well structured and it gives you a progression update as you play through. An important thing to know is Mud and Blood is a systematic, small-scale firefight simulator, which means that the vast amount of independent mechanics colliding with each other assure that the game generates an infinite amount of tactical scenarios, some of them quite chaotic and definitely memorable. So let's jump into the review. Now the campaign screen gives you some really useful information regarding your current mission as you can see from the brief and intel sections on the interface. A very important part of campaign though are the battle conditions that are generated. Now battle conditions can be either positive or negative traits which will affect the current battle stage you're on. As you play through the campaign and rank up you will unlock the unlock command abilities. This is via three cards in which you get to select one based on what you're wanting to aid you in your campaign. So if you manage to get the tactical advantage ability like myself then this will allow you to re-roll the battle conditions one time per stage. So as you can see, I have Heavy Clouds, Prize Attack, and Iron Wall. Now Heavy Clouds is kind of neutral condition as it prevents both myself and the enemies from using air support. Surprise Attack's positive as it lowers enemy reaction times by 10%, and Iron Wall would be a negative as it increased difficulty by having a pack 3840 platoon deployed. So let's start with the graphics. Now, can I just say, wow. I find these graphics beautiful. <laughs> like, I, I just think they're so, they're so appealing to the eyes. The level of detail is great. As you'll see throughout the mission, you know, you'll see blood, you'll see explosions. You'll probably even see fires from the likes of grenades. And if we run to a flamethrower, right. from a flamethrower. <laughs> But due to the way, you know, the graphics look and how much I like them, personally, I, I think it'd be unfair to score this any less than 10 out of 10 for graphics. Because I think there's not enough, there's not a lot of games out here that use this style of graphics. Especially the whole aerial view of looking down on the battlefield. I think it's great. I think it's, it's really smart and innovative. Now, the next thing I'd like to discuss is UI. Because, ooh, let me just move them away from that grenade. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, they stunned. And they did take a little bit of damage, but not too much. Yeah, but the UI, I'd like to talk about it. Because, I've got to say, I think it, the game's so very cleverly coded. And the whole system behind it all is honestly insane and well thought out. 
when your players rank up, you know, the game's very clear in showing you, you know, this this player is ranked up, like you need to click this player so that you can basically choose the special like the speciality. Because as you can see at the minute, we just have six standard soldiers, you know, the carrion, you know, standard Springfields. They're not they're not special, you know, the they'll get the job done, but you couldn't play the whole, the whole game with... Well, at least I don't think... Uh, I've never tried. Maybe you could play the game with just recruits and never specialising, but I personally wouldn't do that. <laughs> see, as you can see here, I uh, I placed, uh, picked up a shovel from an enemy um, that I'd killed. Oh, we've actually... We've got one here, so I can show you right now firsthand. So, as you can see, he's now shown that he's carrying a shovel. I can go on the battlefield. Uh, and to use equipment that you're carrying, you just right-click near that player. So, say a shovel, you right-click. And through using F9, which is the tactical overlay, as you can see, it's off, now it's on. You've got the base, the radius of cover. So, you've got your cover radius here in these trees. So, that means if, if your soldier's within this white circle, then... He's a invisible to the enemy, but he cannot com he, he cannot combat them. So you can't stick a player in the center of a tree and expect them to shoot people because he, he won't fire because he can't see because you've put him in the middle of a bush <laughs> and he can't see through bushes, which is common sense. Like you know what I mean. If 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 you went inside a really thick tree or jungle or bushes, you're not going to really be able to see around you very well so i think it's quite smart and it makes a lot of sense now the way i use it again this sort of user interface related is i normally just drag use the drag just make a quick little selection like that but you can so i can click number one and it will move him because he's the first the first soldier and then two and vice versa so they are lab like numbered one to six if you want to select them all click seven and that'll select all of them you want different formations i just click keep clicking seven and keep clicking on the spot and they'll, they'll get into different formations now if you leave them on top of each other like this oh i actually forgot i'd selected seven then <laughs> if you leave them stood right on top of each other you will get a five percent like negative effect where your players are, like your, your soldiers are that close together they, they can't physically shoot properly they can't be as, as accurate as they want to be See, we haven't got any rank ups yet, but when we rank up, I can show you guys right. the specialities and we can discuss the user interface a little bit more. See, as you can see, two of our soldiers have just ranked up and the game's very clear in showing you need to click on these two players. Hence why you've got, you know, you've got your gold arrow jumping up and down or your rank. So you click that and as you can see, the user interface is brilliant. You've got loads of different options for what specialist you want to go into. So let's say we pick Signaler, for example. Oh, wrong one. <laughs> it tells you it's a Signaler. It tells you what they can do. They can call powerful support with the radios. And it informs you that the slow movers. See, in comparison to this, if we look at light infantry, it tells you the shock infantry with medium range capabilities. This means you realistically want them in your front line to push enemy emplacements and stuff. And it tells you the fast movers, which again ties in with the this guy's fast, get him up there. <laughs> so if we just click on this, we, let's say we pick a gunner, we pick a sniper. Now when these either of these level up rank up again, once you get your second rank, now soldiers rank up every 10 experience, so that's always something that's important to remember. So once they rank up again, it'll give us the option to either level up their ability like the combat basically the combat level the weapon or you can even get skills now skills are so useful in this in this game because your skills so let's say you choose the light infantry for example first skill you're going to get it's going to be a smoke grenade now smoke grenades are amazing because you can deploy them they cool down quickly so you don't have to wait ages before you can use another one and it gives you cover so while you're moving your troops and getting into position and so on and so forth would you be surprised just how useful it is and how many times it's saved my ass <laughs> so let's just rank these up i'm not really putting too much care or thought into it because i really just kind of want to show you guys what it's like when we get another upgrade 
let's say we just, oh, I actually meant to, oh, I was going to say, I meant to click officer and I nearly clicked something else, so let's not do that. <laughs> User interface though, wise though, I, I'd give it a 9 out of 10 personally. I think it's good, I think it's, it's really well thought out, it's not confusing, it doesn't leave you sat there scratching your head wondering what, what you're supposed to do. You know, it's, it's very clear. And realistically, that's the most important thing in a game is that it's clear and it's easy to understand. Because if you're playing a game and the U the UI makes no sense, it's it just it just frustrates you. You're going to be stuck in a situation where you're not enjoying yourself because you can't understand the game you're playing. This is something you will never experience with Modern Blood because the UI is very well thought out. Now next, I think I think replayability would be the next um, the next topic or category we should really score on. Because with any game, replay replayability is important. You know, if you've got a game and once you've played it once, you've played it that like you might as well have played it a hundred times, then you're not going to enjoy yourself. You know, you play it, it, it's boring. You know, you end up doing the same things. Nothing ever changes. This is not modern blood. With modern blood, as I've explained, you know, it's. There's always something new happening, there's always a new tactical scenario, there's always new tactics you can use. And the battlefield's procedurally generated and it's always, like, it's always different. You're never gonna play through the campaign and be like, oh I've had this exact map generation before. It'll never happen. You will always have a new generation that you've never before seen. And I quite like that, if I'm being honest. I really do. So as you can see, you drop the Panzer Force. Or Faust, I'm not too sure how you say it because I'm just terrible. But this is like another tool, the same as the shovel, except this one obviously you shoot a rocket. It's a one time use, but you know, it's useful and it really does save your ass. A lot of times I've had to use it to take out artillery and vehicles and stuff like that. Although sometimes it's even good just for like enemy suppression. See, I've stunned both of them. That would really give me time to push up through this tree line if I was closer. I'm not a tactical genius though. Let me just put that out there. <laughs> and I think it will be clear watching this video that I am not a tactical genius. <laughs> Alright, let's go. So, you see we've got a more difficult enemy there. You've got your standard Krauts, which is what they're called in, in this game. Which are these ones here. He died instantly, wow. See, now we've got a second upgrade, so we can choose. This is where you can choose combat, weapon, skill. That's a permanent skill though, which is, it lasts indefinitely. Great skill. Let's go for combat though, for now. See, you don't have, with, with um, campaign, it's not the same as the uh, classic mode, where if 10 Germans get past you, that's it. You could technically cheese the game, if you could find cover the whole way, you could run. Like, I've got stage where I'm at the stage before in different levels where I've had one person left alive and I've had like 10 or 15 enemies left to fight. But luckily I've had cover all the way along the top or the bottom where I've just ran between tree and tree and eventually managed to get like him over the finish line to finish that like stage. So it's not the same as classic, like you don't have that threat of, if you, you, you don't have to kill everyone. As you can see, I've unlocked this skill, which allows me to mark a target, so I'm going to focus on him, as he's the most dangerous enemy there. <laughs> so replayability, the fact that you can quite literally play a hundred missions and every single one will be massively vastly different I'd say I'd say 10 out of 10 without a fail because you can literally play the game a hundred times and always have something new happen and that's what matters that is what matters with a game you know you you, you want to be able to play it and in not only enjoy it but know that you're not just going to get the same stuff constantly like you're always going to have a new challenge and a new situation Fun factor. Now this is a difficult category to rate, as everyone's different and interested by different things. I think game, like the games, 
ability to have a diverse campaign with lots of challenge and tactical situations allows the user to have a lot of fun, especially when you tie this into the graphics and the audio. The game becomes very immersive and you can find yourself spending whole days playing and loving every second of it. But everyone is different and because of this I'm going to base my score on my own enjoyment. And as I've said a few times, I have enjoyed every second so I'm going to rate it 10 out of 10. Now difficulty is probably the, the, the trickiest, like most difficult category to actually explain really. Mud and Blood is designed to be a difficult game. It's not designed to reward you for doing simple tasks. It's, it's not one of them games where everyone gets a participation medal, which is what I like. I enjoy that aspect of it. If you don't pay enough attention to the battlefield and things can quickly go wrong and result in a squad wipe, this means one attempt gets added and you can try again with a fresh squad of recruits. Although if a soldier's incapacitated, as you can see, he's, he's technically still alive. Uh, if I can actually find him. I can't remember where he died. See, he's got one HP. Now, if all of my other soldiers died and he still had one HP, this means the next time I try to do this level, he'll have 100 health, he'll keep his weapon, his rank, like his speciality, and he'll still have 15 XP. So the game, it's not... It, it's not completely brutal. Like It doesn't punish you to the point where you're unhappy. It, it's fair punishment is what... We, the best, probably the best way to describe it really. Now I enjoy the difficulty a lot because it pushes me to be better and to develop my tactics more, but I do think it can be quite unforgiving to inexperienced players. It'd be great if there was maybe a difficulty slider, let's say you've got your standard hard mode, like your standard mode here where it is difficult, and then let's say they added an easy mode. Like I don't mean easy as in there's two enemies on the map, like don't get me wrong, I just mean a little bit toned down a little bit easier for people to get through for those who are a bit unexperienced with the game and like just want to get used to it but i'd say obviously if such a if such a scale was added then you know you probably would need to disable the ability to unlock the ribbons or steam achievements for playing it on such an easy difficulty but it's just an idea of my own you know it's it's, it's not implemented into the game so don't worry too much <laughs> But I'd give it a solid 8 out of 10 for difficulty because although I enjoy it, it can be frustrating if you're new to the game. And it did frustrate me at first. But like I've said a couple of times, I love the challenge. So I'm going to push these up and we're going to... Um, we're going to try and get through this level to wrap, and wrap up the video. And I'm hoping that, like... I'm not I'm not an amazing video, like, video reviewer, you know, I'm not... I'm not huge on the YouTube like scene and stuff like that, but I'm hoping that I can that I've been I'm I'm hoping I've been able to give this game the care and dedication and the respect that it deserves because it honestly is so well made. And the fact that oh, that one single developer, yes, that's right. One single developer made this game is honestly phenomenal. I think it's amazing. Like, you see full game studios pour millions into into games, and some of them are the worst things you could ever play. Like, they just feel terrible. Whereas with Mud and Blood, you, you don't have that. You really don't have the sense of, oh, I'm not enjoying this. It is a game where you can pour 100 hours into it, and you will love every single hour. Like, it is so well made. I'm, I'm kind of waffling a bit probably uh, you probably think I'm waffling but I've, I've just got a lot of respect for the fact that a single developer could do this much on their own like it is amazing and Mud and Blood to be fair it does have a, an amazing community it does have amazing communities there's a discord server everyone's always wanting to help you know you can always get advice and so on and so forth but as you can see, we've man we've we crossed that the line at the end. You know, it's got stars on it. It's the exact same as your starting line, so you, you can't really miss it. And it it basically just says you've got to go from this a point A to point B. So you know, stars to stars, from from this star to that star. <laughs> Worst explanation ever. But essentially, you know, once as long as all of the soldiers you have alive that aren't incapacitated, that's the important point. Because if they're incapacitated, it doesn't matter. You can still finish the mission then you've completed that mission. So as you've seen, although there were enemies alive at the end, I just ran. I got into a tree close to the line and then I made a run because I knew my soldiers could make that run 
and it's like once they cross the line we were done so at the end we're here we've got an xp table basically and it also shows us the awards that each soldier has got so now the next battle we go into these two soldiers will be 100 percent and now they are baptism by fire which is plus one veterancy save so my understanding of veterancy saves is basically if someone shoots your soldier and it should kill them it will use a veterancy save instead of killing them but once that veterancy saves used it's used and you know like you can stack them but when you run out you know you, you your soldier will die if it if it gets that shot so secured the sector that's a standard you know that's a standard xp amount you'll get two thousand for completing it you then get a, the an amount based on how long it took you to do it the amount of enemies you killed and then how many people you had left alive now your win streakers say i've done this mission now i've got the next mission so if i manage to do the next mission in the first attempt my win streak goes to two and i'll get additional xp but because it took me through i think that was the third attempt for that one there you know i only i only now have a win streak of one which is no bonus and i got 4270 xp so if we go into korea this is now we're now we're now like halfway to getting fifty thousand and ranking up again we're currently a captain you know we're, we're getting there slowly now one thing i did like which i'll touch on because this this review's been based on the campaign although i have mentioned ribbons a couple of times and you're probably looking at this now thinking why is some horizontal and why is some vertical now horizontal lines are only going to affect your classic rank and vice versa so like the vertical lines will only affect your campaign it doesn't they don't affect each other so i've earned a bronze star which has survived 50 waves and one and now i and now i have a one percent chance to start with an extra soldier and then i've also done the shell shock ribbon which has received a thousand shells enemy arty and mortars will drop one less round so they're both perks that i now carry through them ribbons whereas if you look at the campaign i've got i was on schedule on d-day so i'll just start with one xp instead of starting with zero and then i've also got the combat you know kill 100 enemies kill a thousand enemies and this adds plus one and plus 10 damage to all attacks respectively so as you can see the ribbons are worth getting because it shows like i'm now getting a plus 11 damage increase on all of my weapons throughout the missions so it just shows like you really have got to just work hard if you work hard and you go for the ribbons it really does pay off because you can get some really cool bonuses and things that won't make the game super easy where it's like too easy but they will give you more tactical options you know you know that you have a chance of this happening or you have increased damage which means you might then start moving your troops a bit differently because they've got different capabilities so on and so forth but yeah i i've got to say i i love the game i've said it over and over again throughout the review and i really do love the game you know it's it's got its own wiki page which is fantastic like it literally if you if you don't understand the game or there's things you want to know you can always check out the wiki page it's there 24 hours a day it, it's never going anywhere and then they also have discord which is fantastic as it says tactics and feedback the the community there is so friendly i joined the community and i was honestly shocked with how nice that everyone was and it's you know there's there's thousands of people or I, i'm not sure how many but there's a lot of people in that discord and i've never seen anyone be toxic i've never seen anyone be nasty everyone just wants to help each other you know they'll if you ask for advice they'll say oh have, have you tried doing this or they, they'd say from my experience it might we'd normally use this type of soldier for this situation you know maybe if you want to try that you know it, it's it's just a lovely environment to be around and i i really do have to shout out to all of them because they are the reason i still game to this day it's nice to see fellow gamers out there that still care and aren't haven't been taken over by the toxic side that a lot of people have these days but you know if you want to follow the latest news you know, there is a modern bulb website i'm going to include the link in the description so please feel free to check it out uh again i'm also going to include the link for the, to the steam store page if you want to buy the game it doesn't break the bank it's it, you're not going to go on there and think oh, oh it's going to cost 60 pounds it, it's not going to break your bank it's it, it's such a cheap game for how amazing it is like personally if i was the developer i'd have charged more <laughs> so 
yeah, he's he's done amazing work. He's like I explained earlier, he done modern. He started with modern blood. You know, you got two, you got three. You done. I think you done. Um, he done another one as well, but I never played it personally, so I'm not going to touch on that. But it was just modern blood recondo. I think it was recondo. It was based on the Vietnam, Vietnam War. I think. But uh, he's actually redeveloping a recondo now. So when that's out, I am definitely going to be playing it, and I will be doing another game review because if it's anything like this. It's going to be amazing. So with that, guys, I'd like to wish you all an amazing day. I hope you have a great night. And please go and check out this game on Steam. It'll be It's worth every penny. And it will give you hundreds or thousands of hours of enjoyment. So take care, guys, and peace out. So I'm just editing this at the minute, and I've got to say, I really did waffle, didn't I? <laughs> so apologies for waffling, but... The game just, it gets me so excited because it's just nice to see it. It's nice to see it develop, like there's still developers out there that can make artwork because it is a piece of art, this game. It, it's so good. The nostalgia it brings back to me from like when I grew up and I played on Congregate. It's amazing. But yeah, once again, I'm sorry for the waffle. Um, <laughs> words kind of escapes me during the video sometimes. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it anyway. And please do go and check out Mud and Blood.